Good morning and welcome to the Anthony Petiti Organic Gardening Show. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. Here we are, September. Can you believe? I, I just can't believe how fast the year is going. Um, and where did it go? It seems like we didn't really hardly have a summer. And it still is technically summer. But after Labor Day, many, many people say, you know, oh, summer's over. But technically, um, we still have summer um, for actually a few more weeks. So, um so we're going to go ahead, um, get our show started like normal, um, asking for the Lord's blessing, and then we're going to get into all of the things that you have been asking us this week and what's going on at the greenhouse. Father, we just come before you and we thank you for your goodness and your grace. Father, we just thank you for getting us through the fair and giving us the strength that we needed to do so. We just thank you for all of your many blessings and we just hope that we were an inspiration to others and that we we're able to set an example um, for you and just gives plant that little seed to someone uh, while they were at the fair. Father, we just thank you again for all of our many blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, yes, the Stark County Fair was over on Monday. Um, it seemed like um, half the week I was still um, busy at the fairgrounds with people picking up and us cleaning up. Um, the Grange Building and the Farm Bureau Building, but um, many of you have contacted me with questions that you had, and um, and there are some things going on right now. So um, we've noticed a lot of bagworms still. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, um, having the bagworms. So remember that the systemic is going to be your best way to control that um unless it's in an area where you're going to be growing um, some type of an edible um, or if it is on an edible. And then you're going to want to be doing some heavy spraying. Um, if you, I won't go into in depth so that everybody has to hear that, but if you do have bagworm and you didn't hear um, all of the instructions that I gave, you can always give me a call at the store and I can go over that, all of that with you. Um, the first tree question that we had today was from Cindy Kelly. Um, thank you, Cindy. Um, and she sent me some photos um, and an email and she had um, these issues um, with her pin oak tree. And she has these um, leaves that um, have brown spotches, um, patches all over them. Um, she had her husband hold down the limbs while she took a picture of it, and she went in to know if this was happening because it was dry. Um, we really aren't that dry, um, so most likely um, that is not the reason. Um, pin oaks um, are not real susceptible to a lot of diseases, um, but they are susceptible to oak wilt. Um, it is a disease that isn't, um, it's a little bit more on the rare side, um, but um, it's it's confusing sometimes because it is a fungus, so uh, we can control it, um, but um, most of the time it is traveled um, to your plant by an insect. Um, an insect has landed on a tree that has the issue, um, and then they bring it to your tree. Um, you'll usually see some lesions on the bark. Um, even down the trunk, not just on limbs. Um, you'll usually see these lesions also um, down the trunk, you know, toward the base of the plant. Um, it can be treated with a fungicide, um, but you also might want to treat it um, for an insect um, because it was brought to your tree usually by an insect. That's how that fungus has traveled. So um, you might want to treat for an insect and a fungus, um, and hopefully you can wrap that up. Again, I cannot emphasize enough um, how important it is um, to always fertilize your trees and shrubs in the spring and in the fall. Um, what we would recommend is, um, for, for the pin oak, um, as long, again, that there's no edibles around it, um, is um, a systemic insecticide fungicide. 
um, that you would do systemically around the base of the plant. Um, if it is, like this one is on a pin oak, um, if it is in an area where, you know, maybe your garden isn't far um, or you have fruit trees close by, um, in that case, um, I would definitely probably, um, I would definitely, not probably, I would definitely want to use an organic product um, and treat it um, by spraying. Um, again, we don't have a, um, a systemic, um, organic right now. Um, so I would um, want to use the copper fungicide, but I would also, as the insecticide, I would use like all seasons oil or neem oil. Um, those act as a slight fungicide, um, but if you have this fungus that's growing um, like this, the copper is going to be a little stronger. Um, the all seasons oil or the neem oil um, will act as a fungicide and an insecticide, um, double whammying that fungus. And you should be able to take care of it. It's probably going to take two sprays just to be on the safe side and to make sure um, that you do have that um, all under control and that you're good on that. Um, the uh, next question that we had um, was about um, tomatoes and um, their tomatoes all season um, they started off very well um, no insect um, they are an organic grower um, but they have some little holes in their tomatoes now that we are late in the season um, a lot of times if you just notice just a tiny little hole um, when you cut the tomato open there's no insect on the inside um, no no big damage to the tomato. Um, this is all to the fruit itself, not to the leaves. These just these little teeny holes. A lot of times it will be bees and not like a honeybee, um, but other type of bees will um, actually come up because the fruit has some sweetness. Um, it's, it's wet. Um, and a lot of times, especially in the mornings, they will be eating, um, drinking the dew off of the tomatoes and they will actually pierce it with their little stinger. And so if you do have some tomatoes with these little holes in it, that's usually what it is. Um, using them quickly, of course, because, you know, once that skin is pierced, um, decaying is going to start to the inside quickly. Um, but you can just cut it off and go ahead and eat the tomato. It's not going to hurt you at all. Um, the other type of things that you'll notice this damage on is your sweet potatoes. Sweet potato leaves is where it happens on those. And also your sweet potato vine, the ornamental sweet potato. You'll notice these little teeny holes in that. And that is usually a bee in the late season um, also that um, that you'll notice um, coming on. So if you are having problems now, the other issues with the tomatoes is dying from the bottom up. Um, you know, you might have a little bit of late blight now. Um, it's starting to get late into the season. We're having some cool nights. Um, I think it was Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Morning, we were down to about 50 in our area in Louisville. Um, some lower areas might have been a little cooler than that. When we do start to see um, temperatures like that, you're going to start to see um, your tomato plants dying back a little bit. Um, cleaning off those bottom limbs, um, those dying limbs at the bottom is going to be a good idea. Um, and then if you think that you do have a fungus, still spraying with a copper or the neem oil is going to keep that plant going. Remember, um, you you can still um, have those tomatoes coming to flourish, and especially if you have indeterminates and you still have flower on your tomato plants, you will still have flowers. Um, you're still going to have fruit. So um, if we're still having warm days, it might slow up because of the cool temperatures at night, um, but you will still have tomatoes coming on. If you do have your tomatoes planted in containers and they are movable for you, um, if we do go down into the 40s, um, you know, mid 40s, you might want to pull them into the garage for the night or pull them inside the porch, something like that. Um, that's going to help keep, th keep them growing and um, producing fruit um, a little bit more readily um, and more quickly for you so that you still continue to do that. Um, if this is the time of year also that, you know, we do harvest lots and lots of tomatoes. So because of that, we are offering all of our basil plants that are beautiful and huge right now. We have those on sale for only $3.00. 
And so you have fresh basil um, for your um, fresh tomato sauce that you're making, spaghetti sauce, all of those things. I did um, actually put a post on Facebook on, I think, Wednesday of this past week um, and um, letting everyone know on Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook and you're in need of basil, we have lots of it growing. I'm actually um, on Thursday, um, the Farm Bureau had a dinner on the farm, a very nice event as a fundraiser for uh, for Farm Bureau and for Wounded Warriors. And um, we had had a chef um, that got our basil. We had cut the fresh basil for him in the morning, and he was just very impressed with how wonderfully fresh and the pungent of that scent and the flavor from the basil being so good. And so if you want that for your spaghetti sauce, your tomato sauce, uh, maybe you're canning some soup right now as uh, several of your things are coming on, um, fresh basil is going to taste so well. So come on over and take advantage of that sale. Only $3.00 for the four and a half inch pots. Um, and you can be fresh cutting uh, basil for a month or so yet. Um, and we also have them in very large pots. So if you have um, a restaurant or if you just want some fresh cut, we do that for you too. If you just want a couple sprigs, you can come in and we will cut sprigs for you and we sell it that way as well. So that's going to be something that's very nice for you. One more thing that you might need for um, your tomato sauce, your spaghetti sauce is garlic. And um, most of you have harvested your garlic, but if you didn't, um, we have harvested garlic and we also have um, organic garlic um, for seed. So the seed garlic. And we have all of those um, at the store right now. So if you need garlic, we have that. And if you want to get your garlic in, because this is the time that you're going to be planting your garlic, um, you can go ahead um, and get that. Now, um, we had a question. Someone was in, um, actually, I think yesterday, and um, they said, well, how do I plant? I've never planted garlic before. And, you know, how do I do it? Well, you buy the bulb. And usually each bulb will have six to ten cloves on each garlic bulb. And um, so you take that, you peel it apart like you were going to cook it, but you don't take everything off of it. You're just going to pull all of your cloves apart and then you plant each individual clove. Um, The root side down and you're going to go about four inches and about eight inches inches apart. You can even go up to 10 inches apart, depending on how much space you have. We also like to see, because it's a bulb, we like to see you plant your cloves um, with some bulb tone. It's a wonderful fertilizer for it. Um, they, you don't have a lot of issues with insects or or the voles or the chipmunks digging up um, garlic. So you really don't need to add any of those repellents like we say to do with your other um, tulip bulbs and all of those kind of things. Um, But planting that bulb in the ground um, at right around four inches deep to eight to 10 inches apart, planting with the bulb tone. Um, And this is the time of year you want to go ahead and get that garlic planted. Um, Garlic is very, very healthful. It's great for your heart, um, all of your blood vessels, um, Lots of garlic is good for that. So if you've had issues like that, it's great with circulation. Um, You want to get your garlic in so that you have it for next year and you can plant it and have lots and lots to do. Um, And um, hopefully you have some to eat or please go down to a farmer's market. We're going to tell you all about the farmer's market as soon as we come back from our break. We're going to be hearing from all of our sponsors. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.